slicers allow you to choose which members to make available to users. To add a slicer, right click on the filter member and select add slicer from the Fluence Excel menu. I now have an in cell tree view where I can navigate and pick any member I want within the hierarchy. By default, the tree view allows you to navigate to the very bottom level of the hierarchy. Slicers are fully connected to your data. This means the member list will change with the underlying data, so any additional members will automatically be available for selection in the dropdown. We can easily move and resize the slicer, so I can move it away from the grid and it will not lose any functionality. One slicer can directly drive several grids and charts by being used in the member selector where all available slicers for the hierarchy in question are displayed here. Choose one and then it functions in the same way as any other Fluence Excel selection and has the same related set selection possibilities. If we right click on our slicer and select edit, we can take a look at some of the options available. Firstly, we can choose the members that will be available in the slicer in the Slicer Selection tab. This is not needed for tree view slicers, as we can drill down and explore the hierarchy within them. In the Appearance tab, we can change the slicer type. A later video will cover the different types available. We can give the slicer a name to display in the title bar, or we can drive it dynamically from an Excel cell range. We'll call this slicer Product. In the Behavior tab, I can choose whether to enable the ability to select multiple items at once in my slicer. I can also choose to update a particular Excel range with the selections I have made. This can then be used by the range picker shown at the start of the video to drive other Fluence Excel objects. Here, I will choose to put the slicer selections in the cells in column L, and then say we want to output the caption to be more user friendly. If multi-select is enabled, then the output range must contain enough cells for every selection. Lastly, we can set up tree view slicers so they will stop at a particular level. So let's limit this one to the subcategory level. Let's click OK to have those changes applied to our slicer. As you can see, the tree view behaves exactly as before and updates the grid as expected. Our slicer has a title of product and you can also see that when we reach a subcategory level, there are no more options to drill down. Column L has been populated with our selections, which I could now use to drive formula reports or SQL statements contained elsewhere within the workbook.